Mike, Bill, I'd like to just say that uh, the Oklahoma Geological Survey is not a regulator. We are a state agency for research and public service. I'm going to show a fair number of slides uh, that talk about the regulations that are occurring as a, a sort of an informational uh, piece as to what's going on in Oklahoma. And hopefully I represent the Oklahoma Corporation Commission well. So they've provided a significant input on this as well. We have funding uh, to, to look at these issues uh, further from uh, RIPSI. And then we have many different partners uh, throughout the country and the state as well. Um, so Bill talked about the increase in the magnitude, number of magnitude 3 or greater earthquakes uh, within uh, Oklahoma. Uh, one of the questions or things we still have to deal with is how do we know that this is so different from that of the past? And so one way to, to look at this is to look at the number of magnitude 4 or greater earthquakes that have occurred in Oklahoma. We have a record of these earthquakes going back to uh, 1882 based off a of historical um, accounts of people feeling earthquakes that are recorded in journals and newspapers and that sort of thing. And so uh, we used to, in Oklahoma, when uh, seismicity rates were sort of at a steady rate, we averaged about uh, one magnitude four earthquake every 10 years. And uh, just to really put this in perspective, things started to pick up in 2009 uh, through 2013. We averaged three earthquakes each year. And last year alone, in 2014, we had more uh, than 10 uh, magnitude 4 greater earthquakes. We had 15. So a good way to say this is that we experienced more than 100 years of normal Oklahoma seismicity in one year. So the, the seismicity rates were quite dramatic. Um, and needless to say, the Oklahoma Geological Survey Seismic Monitoring Program is uh, really working hard to keep up with those. And as Bill said the, the number of earthquakes within Oklahoma of magnitude 3 or greater um, exceeded those in California. So this is a, a real effort and uh, we certainly are doing our best to document the seismicity uh, within Oklahoma. So having said that, we see the, the primary concentration of earthquakes uh, occurring within central and north central Oklahoma. Uh, this uh, area represents about 15% uh, of uh, the aerial coverage of Oklahoma. So it's a very large uh, uh, distribution throughout Oklahoma. Um, this area also captures uh, a significant number of wastewater disposal wells and wastewater disposal volume that I'll get into in a little bit. So just to show that we're truly capturing the greatest amount of increase in that uh, portion of central and north central Oklahoma, I've shown uh, the cumulative uh, volume or cumulative number of earthquakes in the gray area and the blue area. And you can see uh, that the areas of central and north central Oklahoma have the uh, uh, greatest rate of earthquakes. And we do see some uh, rate increase in other portions of Oklahoma, although uh, much less than in the central and north central part of the state. So one of the things we're uh, working on at the Oklahoma Geological Survey is uh, understanding uh, the uh, wastewater disposal within the state. So uh, Bill talked about a number of cases where we had uh, recent uh, disposal wells that were disposing of uh, hydraulic fracturing waste fluid and triggering earthquakes in the cases of Ohio and Arkansas. Most of the water that's disposed of within Oklahoma actually comes from the production of oil and gas. This is naturally occurring uh, saltwater brines that are uh, uh, in the formations with the oil and gas. And as part of producing the oil and gas, they remove this water from the subsurface. And this water is not of uh, uh, drinkable water or of water quality sufficient for uh, surface discharge. And so it's re-injected into the ground. Uh, the primary formation in which this water is injected um, as can be seen in the, the bottom uh, panel, bottom left-hand panel, is the Arbuckle Formation. This uh, formation uh, can take large amounts of volume with little or no pressure. Uh, this uh, formation is the deepest sedimentary formation uh, of any significance, with, uh, and it's broadly uh, available for disposal throughout most of Oklahoma. Um, it, it overlies the crystalline basement, that is the metamorphic and granitic rocks 
um, that underlie all the sedimentary rocks in which the oil and gas uh, reside. So uh, this is the, the primary target uh, of our concerns within the state is the, the injection that's occurring within uh, the Arbuckle as well as the uh, basement, as I'll get into a little bit further. But as we can see, uh, the largest uh, injection volumes and greatest concentrations of wells occur within central and north central Oklahoma. So we have this broad correlation um, in space and uh, the earthquakes appear to be lagging uh, the in initiation of large injection volumes within these regions. We do see uh, other areas with very large injection volumes that don't have as much of a response uh, uh, to uh, the injection with earthquakes and that remains to be examined why uh, some areas uh, may be more prone to uh, a triggered seismicity from fluid injection than others. So one of the efforts we're undertaking here in Oklahoma is uh, to create a database of faults uh, within the state. As Bill mentioned, the size of fault uh, dramatically affects the size of earthquake we might expect. And so we've uh, compiled this fault database um, from both industry contributions and published literature. I have a, a student uh, daily adding faults from published literature into this database and uh, we certainly are hopeful that we'll get more industry contributions, but we've uh, gotten a very large number of industry contributions to date. We are working on documenting this effort so that then we can make this a uh, publicly available uh, database for all stakeholders uh, doing either research or trying to understand what's occurring uh, within Oklahoma. Uh, but this is a, a good first step towards uh, understanding where we might want to uh, examine injection activities further, as we'll see here in a minute. So in Oklahoma, we've developed sort of this interagency cooperation um, as the earthquakes began to pick up in 2010. Um, I began to interact with the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, who's the regulator of these uh, disposal wells within the state of Oklahoma um, on a weekly and nearly daily basis. And so the primary uh, resource we have is data, and we've been trying to compile data and condense this data and make it usable for um, the regulators within the state. We've been working with industry partners and other research partners to improve our understanding of, of what's occurring. And as well, we're also gaining then uh, more information about injection and operational data from the oil and gas wells that the Oklahoma Corporation Commission is making publicly available uh, that can support additional studies uh, to move forward. So uh, the Oklahoma Corporation Commission UIC program uh, was created uh, as part of the, the 1974 Safe, Water, uh, Safe Drinking Water Act. Um, so the, all the regulations surrounding disposal wells um, are designed to protect uh, uh, sources of uh, drinking water. And so the, the regulations were designed to ensure that surface and underground uh, drinking water is protected by these oil and gas uh, operations. The Corporation Commission uh, received uh, primacy in 1981. Uh, there are two types of class two disposal wells. Um, there's the what the Oklahoma Corporation refers to as 2D wells or saltwater disposal wells and then there are the 2R wells or the enhanced uh, recovery wells. Uh, so EOR wells re-inject produce water back into the same producing formation to help extract uh, remaining oil within the formation. Uh, there are uh, about 4,000 uh, saltwater disposal wells and about 7,000 uh, enhanced oil recovery wells uh, operating within the state of Oklahoma. So the, the disposal wells take wastewater uh, from the oil and gas industry and inject it into the subsurface. The water is not generally what we think of as water. It has very high salinities, much greater than seawater, and there are often other hydrocarbon and chemical constituents that don't get removed before uh, the water is re-injected into the subsurface, and that's primarily where the regulations surrounding the protection of drinking water lie. Uh, this wastewater comes from two primary sources. Uh, the largest and, and 
for the state of Oklahoma is naturally occurring water that is removed with the oil and gas. This is called produced water. And the, the smaller amount of volume uh, is hydraulic fracturing or flowback water. It's a relatively small amount of the total amount of volume injected uh, within uh, the state of Oklahoma. Of the 4,626 disposal wells uh, within Oklahoma, uh, almost 1,000 of these wells are uh, permitted to dispose of water in the Arbuckle Formation, which I mentioned is the, the deepest formation of uh, disposal within the state of Oklahoma. So last year, um, or I guess uh, uh, the year before, the OCC uh, implemented a traffic light protocol. Um, these are modified permits. And so as uh, an operator comes into an area and wants to inject uh, fluid within an area and is getting a permit for a disposal well, uh, there is now a check uh, whether the location of the proposed well is within um, any uh, close proximity to optimally oriented faults or significantly large faults or within uh, some distance of seismic clusters um, or in an area of interest, which I'll get into further. And if they are, the, the operators ask for a technical meeting and the operator is asked to demonstrate the level of risk of induced seismicity and provide more technical data. Um, the application is required to go to hearing and the staff take a neutral position on whether um, the uh, well is uh, a risk, a seismic risk, uh, risk for triggering earthquakes. So um, last year the, the Corporation Commission went with areas of interest that was a six mile or 10 kilometer buffer around magnitude four earthquakes. And so here we can see uh, what that area of interest map looked like. Uh, they took all magnitude four or greater earthquakes from 2013 um, and this shows through uh, February of 2015. And you can see that it, it highlights a number of areas where we, we've seen increased seismicity within the state of Oklahoma. Um, but it was realized that this maybe didn't capture all the areas of interest. And so they've now redefined the areas of interest um, to include seismic clusters. And a cluster, according to the Corporation Commission, is defined as an area consisting of at least two events with epicenters within a quarter mile of each other with at least one event with a magnitude three or greater. And uh, the area of interest is then a 10 kilometer or six mile buffer from the cluster center. And so the new areas of interest are shown uh, with the red outlines in the hash uh, color area and the green circles show the previous uh, magnitude four um, areas of interest that were defined uh, before this aerial uh, definition that was uh, created by the Corporation Commission. So this captures uh, most of that area um, in which we saw the, uh, the significant increase in seismicity within uh, the state over the last uh, few years. So this shows for the whole state, uh, the primary concentration of largest areas of interest, again, are in central and north central Oklahoma. Um, so uh, along with this new definition of uh, area of interest came uh, also new actions for Arbuckle disposal wells. All Arbuckle disposal wells must provide the following. Operators must provide information to the Oklahoma uh, Corporation Commission uh, Oil and Gas Con Conservation Division that the Arbuckle disposal wells within the area of interest are not in contact or communication with the crystal and basement rock. Wells found not to be in con uh, not to be in contact or communication with the uh, crystal and basement will be a, allowed to resume normal operations. Wells found to be in contact or in communication with crystal and basement must plug back. And that's according to then plans developed uh, with the, the Corporation Commission. And so this directive was sent out March 18th. Operators have seven days to begin reporting. And operators have until April 18th to provide their information to the uh, oil and gas division. Operators who do not provide this information or do not have an approved plugging schedule will be required to reduce their disposal volumes by 50% until they satisfy the directive. So the rates of seismicity have uh, increased dramatically and as such so is the ha uh, seismic hazard within Oklahoma. So uh, earthquake preparedness is being communicated to the public. That's something 
uh, that the public can do to uh, protect themselves, uh, their families, and those in their community is to understand how to prepare and what to do during an earthquake. Um, the OGS and the OCC continue to provide data products to stakeholders and identifying new data sources. Uh, Multi-agency cooperation and data exchange and sharing are critical in addressing issues with informed science. Um, developing a greater understanding of the physical processes in Oklahoma will help to inform future mitigation strategies. So that's really where our research is focused. And thank you for your time.